humans create 5 billion tons of garbage every year. Dumping it all into landfills is terrible for our environment. What's a better way to deal with our trash? Reduce, reuse, and recycle. You probably already help by recycling at home and at school. In fact, 70% of our trash can be recycled. But what happens to all those materials that go in the bins after they get picked up? I'm here at E.J. Harrison & Sons Gold Coast Recycling in Ventura, California. It's at places like these that your recyclables, like glass, plastic, paper, and metal, are sent every day. Let's take a look at the life cycle of your reusable trash. Let it go, Mario! Tons of garbage each day goes up these conveyor belts where man and machine work together to separate everything into their appropriate categories. First to be separated is cardboard, a material that's easy to reuse again once it's cleaned up. Next comes paper, newspaper, printer paper, and junk mail, which gets compiled here. Plastics of all kinds get separated for later recycling, and glass is moved in this direction. This is my favorite part. You know how two magnets that are similarly polarized will push away from each other, right? Well, this machine uses that same principle. Any metal that comes down the line, like an aluminum can, will be literally propelled into its own chute when it passes through the magnets. Watch. <laughs> cool, huh? Thousands of pounds of cardboard are now in these cubes, all neatly separated and stacked, and ready for the next step. Here at the new Indy Paper Mill in Ontario, California, 1,200 tons of used cardboard gets turned into brand new paper. It starts when the bales are dumped into giant pulpers, vats of hot water that mash everything up into a thick stew. It's here that any non-paper is removed, such as wrapping wire and plastics. Filters remove finer pieces of debris, including the printed inks, leaving as the end result pure liquid paper soup. Gigantic pressers then begin the process of squishing together the pulp, which not only starts to form the new sheets, but also squeezes out much of the water, until finally the sheets go through 55 dryers, heated to 280 degrees, and it takes only a few seconds to remove the last remaining bits of moisture from the newly formed paper, which is then rolled into giant spools. Those rolls then get cut into the size of paper New Indies customers have asked for. The cut rolls are taped and banded closed, stored on top of each other, and the process is finally complete. And what about all that plastic that makes up so much of our waste? Well, most of it is not wasted at all. Companies like Talco Plastics in Long Beach, California, separate the bales of plastic on these conveyor belts. An electric eye looks for the exact kind of plastic being recycled today and blows what it needs up these tubes faster than any human could. Next comes the grinder, which chunks everything into tiny parts. Those fragments still have some paper labels on them, so this louvered machine and its blowers automatically strip it all away, leaving just the plastic that gets washed and rinsed in these vats of hot water. Look at the difference between the clean and dirty plastic. Notice that the plastic is still all the colors of the rainbow? At the next stage, it all gets superheated and melted together. 
Just like when you mix all your markers or crayon colors, you get gray. The same thing happens here. The now gray plastic gets formed into pellets which are boxed up and sent on their way to be formed into some newly made plastic object. The whole process took only an hour but saved so much of our planet's precious resources. Reduce, reuse, and recycle. It's a process that we are all responsible for. What started out like this has been refashioned into something like this. Brand new, ready to use, and recycle again. But you don't have to take my word for it. Mmm. I'll see you next time.